Greetings everyone. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to explore the power of Norton's and Thevenin's theorems, which are fantastic tools for simplifying complex circuits. Stay with me as we uncover the connections between Norton's current and Thevenin's voltage, making circuit analysis a walk in the park. In the circuit we have before us, we'll apply Norton's and Thevenin's theorems. First, we need to find Norton's equivalent resistance, which happens to be the same as Thevenin's equivalent resistance. To do this, we'll mark points A and B in the circuit. Then remove the load RL. Open the current source. And short the voltage source. This simple series connection reveals Norton's equivalent resistance, denoted as Rn, which is equal to Thevenin's equivalent resistance, known as RTH. So Rn equals R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4. Substituting the values of resistors, Rn equals 3 plus 5 plus 2 plus 4 which will result in 14 ohms. Next, we'll determine Thevenin's equivalent voltage, VTH. Begin by opening the load RL. Mark point X here and denote the voltage at this point as Vx. Let's also consider the direction of current at R1 and R2 which is the same direction with the current source which will be denoted as IA. There is no current flowing to R3 and R4 since it is an open circuit. So it means that Vx is equal to the Vth at point A and B. Right after that we can now use Kirchhoff's voltage law, KVL. We all know that summation of voltage at this loop is equal to zero. The equation will be 20 plus, 5 plus 3, IA, minus VX equals 0. Simplifying this equation will yield to 20 plus 8, IA, equals VX. At point X, IA simplifies to 5 amperes, as no current flows in the open circuit. Substituting the value of IA to the KVL equation, we will have 20 plus 8 times, 5, equals VX, resulting in 60 volts. As you inspect the circuit, the voltage at Vx is equal to Vth, since here, there is no current flowing at R3 and R4 due to an open circuit. Now, let's calculate Norton's equivalent current, In, by dividing Vth by Rn. Substituting values, In equals 60 divided by 14 ohms, yielding 4.285 amperes. So meaning, IN can be solved also by dividing the Thevenin's voltage VTH over the Norton's equivalent resistance. The final step is to redraw the circuit into the Norton equivalent circuit. However, before that, I will first show you the Thevenin's equivalent circuit. Which can be transformed into Norton's equivalent circuit. We already know that IN can be solved by VTH over RN. Using the Norton's equivalent circuit. IL can be solved using the current divider formula. IL equals to IN times RN over the sum of RN and RL. Plugging in the numbers, IL equals 4.285 times 14 divided by the sum of 14 ohms and 10 ohms, giving us 2.5 amperes. Therefore, VL is IL times RL, resulting in VL equal to 2.5 times 10, which is 25 volts. In summary, this demonstrates how Norton's and Thevenin's theorems are related and can be used to simplify complex circuit analysis. And that's a wrap on Norton's and Thevenin's theorems in circuit analysis. These powerful concepts simplify circuit problem solving. Remember, they're invaluable tools for engineers and hobbyists alike. If you found this video helpful, please like, share your thoughts below and subscribe. Keep learning, keep innovating. See you next time.